Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to uh, the Mug Rug of the Month. Y'all, we are on Mug Rug number seven out of 12. We've done seven Mug Rugs of the Month, an evening live once a month. Hello, everybody. This is a free pattern, so make sure you grab your PDF down below. Hello, everybody. Y'all been here early. Hello. It's great to see you. Thanks for hanging out with me this evening. If you're here uh, during the live, we'd love for you to chat with everybody. That's one of the main reasons why we go live here on my channel is for the community to hang out with each other and just catch up. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Uh, before we get started, let's just go over some dates. Tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, right? <laughs> this week has flown by. Tomorrow, we're doing a block nine of all the things, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time. If you are on Patreon, y'all, Sunday, we are doing our all-day quilt retreat starting at 2 p.m. all the way to 8.30, maybe even longer if we're busy doing stuff. Hello, everybody. So great to see ya. So great to see ya. Uh, I think that's all the dates. Y'all, I have all my pieces ready to go. Uh, and I did something kind of fun, and I'm going to show you that here in a second with this mug rug. Let's flip on over to the cutting mat. Let's take a look at this two page PDF. Again, it's located down in the description box if you wanna grab it. The first page just gives you a little color example of what the mug rug's gonna look like. It's a watering can, y'all. Isn't that cute? Raw edge applique. Delia, if you were on uh, Patreon, the link for the quilt retreat will be on our Patreon page. You'll just go over to the Patreon page and click on the link and jump right in. It's a Zoom, so uh, it's probably easier to join if you've already downloaded the Zoom app, right? That's free. Uh, the first page just tells you all the things you need, right? So let's just go over that real quick. The back fabric, I did make uh, big enough to do a self binding if you want to, and that's what we're gonna do with my mug rug tonight. But I also did give the measurements for how much binding you would need if you want to trim away the extra and do a traditional binding, okay? Your batting and top fabric needs to be seven and a half by 10 and a half inches. You would need some fusible for your raw edge applique or freezer paper. Both of those methods work great. Scrap fabrics for applique. I always say that because these applique pieces are small. And if you have tons of scraps like I do, that's perfect. Uh, an Elmer's glue stick. Y'all know I'm a huge glue baster. I'm going to be glue basting my layers of my mug rug. DMC or pearl cotton thread for your words. I think that there's probably a hundred different ways to put the words onto your mug rug. Uh, I really, really, really... <laughs> wanted to hand stitch the words onto my mug rug but there was no time to do that this week so i did something a little different but if you want to hand stitch your words dmc or pearl cotton thread would work great um and if you're doing that a good size 24 chenille needle would work perfectly a heat, a heat erasing pen would be great for tracing your words a light pad or a window comes in really handy for tracing your applique templates. And uh, I said an optional micron pen or fabric marker. If you don't want to hand stitch your words, you could just trace them with a fabric marker, right? That would be super duper easy. All right, so those are the things you need. There is an optional SVG file if you want to grab that. If you're going to be making lots of these, like for gifts and things like that, and you have a cutting machine, there is the optional SVG file for this. And that link is down in the description box. With the SVG file, y'all, I did do the words. So I'm going to show you something kind of exciting here in just a second with what I've pre-done with my mug rug, okay? But, um... You can just trace your words onto your quilt or your mug rug top. Here are all of your applique templates and they have not been mirror imaged, okay? So if you're using a fusible like I did, 
you're probably going to want to trace your templates from the back side of the paper. Okay? And I've already pre-cut everything, so we're ready to get started. We're ready to get started. Let's heat up this iron. And I'm going to scoot to this little pressing board right on over. Let me show you what I've done so far, y'all. I have the layers of my mug rug and the words. Ta-da! Guess what I did? I'm just going to give you a second to guess what I did. How I got the words on my mug rug. Of course, I did this, and then, <laughs> then it popped in my head, why didn't I just use uh, heat transfer vinyl? Because you could have done that. I almost wish I would have done heat transfer vinyl, but last Sunday when we got back from camping, I moved my scan and cut from across the room right over here next to my cutting table, and I was like, I'm going to start using my scan and cut more. I love my scan and cut, and I have not been using it because it's not been conveniently located <laughs> here in my studio, so I moved it, and so this week I did. I uploaded the SVG into the Canvas Brother Workspace software. And um, so let me tell you what I did. This is a tea stained muslin and I starched the dickens out of it. Y'all, this is almost like a piece of paper. <laughs> she is not a uh, cardboard stiff, but it's like a piece of paper. All right. It's got lots of starch in it. And then uh, I put it on my mat. And do you know what I used? A while back ago, I was at Joanne Fabrics and they had a set of gel pins. There's like 30 different colors. I put one of these art alternative gel pins in my scan and cut. And instead of cutting, I drew the letters onto my fabric and it worked perfectly. I used a black one that's got glitter in it to do the outline. And then I came back with a red one and colored it in. So that's how I got the words onto my mug rug this time. I traced, I drew them, I didn't cut them. Uh, Kim said, I thought you had embroidered it on an embroidery machine. It kind of looks like that, doesn't it? It looks so good. But then it caught, I, I was sitting here coloring it in. <laughs> And I was on my second cup of coffee, and that's not good for my hands anyway. And I was trying to stay in the lines, right? And it popped in my head. I could have used heat transfer vinyl, uh, and that would have been perfect. But this worked out really good, too. Yeah, isn't that cool? So, um, yeah, I did that. So my words are on there, and that saved me a lot of time not having to... Uh, hand stitch, although I really kind of wanted to. All right, so I think my iron is nice and warmed up. So this is going to be the fabric I'm going to use for the back of my mug rug. And I did cut it to the nine and a half by 12 and a half so that I have an extra inch on all sides to do a self binding. And so let me just bring you up to what I've pre done to save some time tonight. With my ruler, I measured over an inch on the left and an inch from the top so that I could quickly and perfectly place my batting right there, right, and just glue baste that in place. That's going to give me the same amount of binding fabric all the way around, and I don't have to eyeball it. Let's glue base this. My bird is downstairs. He is ticked off. <laughs> He's like, I don't like these evening lives. We're supposed to be watching TV together and eating snacks. And no one's paying attention to me. <laughs> it's so great to see y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you make lots of these mug rugs. And you have fun with it. There we go. I'm just going to finger press that right there. 
And then we're going to go ahead and glue base the top of this right in place too. Ooh, this glue is all clumpy, y'all. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I've been saying I was going to get a new speak a new microphone for like 5 months now. It's echoey. Can you hear me? Is it echoey before I move on? I'm going to tell you what, this week has been a week for technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm not sure that there's an echo. Hold on a second. I'll turn that down a little bit. Sounds like the ocean. Is that any better? Better? It's like I'm in a hole. Okay, I'm going to try to turn on my other microphone. Hold on a second. Is that any better? <laughs> Can you hear me now? And is there an echo? Sheila said, certainly better than no sound. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, I'm going to move on. We're going to press the back. Oh, my glory. I just... So here's an update. I remember like a couple weeks ago, I was going to buy a laptop and we were like, oh, the S mode, what is that? And I bought a laptop and it had S mode. Well, the laptop I got was not a great laptop. So we had to take it back today. And get another laptop. So all the, I should have just said, okay, I'm going to get another speaker or another microphone while we're there. All right, so before I flip over this binding, y'all, I do want to go ahead and put down my applique pieces because the bottom of the watering can rests right on the bottom edge, and I want this binding to close up and cover that raw edge, okay? So before we fold over that binding, let's go ahead and place the applique. And I've already pre-cut my pieces. 
And I've already taken the paper off to save a little time, which is good since I had to mess with the microphone. Here are all of my little pieces. Marion said, I'm going to make a quilt using this watering can. Oh, and some of your little bird appliques. Marion, I hope uh, you send me a picture. Send me a picture. All right, so let's go ahead and layer all of these pieces. The main thing that I want to avoid, since we have a handle and a spout coming over here, I just don't want to put any of these pieces too close to where uh, that binding is going to cover, right? So we're just going to draw ourselves a little line with a heat erasing pen so I know where to avoid, right? Now the handle of our watering can is going to go underneath of the main body of the watering can. So let's just put that down and scoot it. Scoot, scoot, scoot. There we go. And then the stout of the watering can is going to also layer up underneath of the body of the watering can like that. And then this part of this spout is going to layer on top of that, right? Just like that. So before I move anything, putting up the other pieces on, let's go ahead and uh, fuse those into place so they will not move. And then we can bring in our star. The star is going to go just like that. And then the leaves. Let's take a look at this picture. Okay. There's a leaf that comes down like this. And a leaf that goes over like this. And then the flower goes just like that. That looks good. Whoops, scooch it over a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to fuse those pieces in place. Marion says, no sound. I have no sound again. No. I do want to change one setting, though, real quick, y'all. Maybe this will help. Is that any better? There we go. Much better. Okay, good. <laughs> now that we've fused this right to the bottom edge of the mug rug top, right? Now we can go ahead and do the self binding y'all I've just come to the conclusion that if there if I'm going live there's something that's going to go wrong either with the computer or with the sewing machine 
or I'm going to mess up here. Something. And I'm just learning to just go with the flow. So y'all have seen, if y'all have watched any of my mug rug videos, y'all have seen me do self-binding a million times. So I'm going to breeze through this part so that we can just kind of focus on stitching out the applique portion of this stuff, right? I'm just going to be gluing and chatting with you while I do it. Plus it's hard to see because I use like a really dark navy blue for the back fabric, which is also going to be my binding. And the lighting, especially at night, just really has a hard time picking up the dark colors. So it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing anyway. Wanda, you got yourself some two-sided fusible. I saw your Joanne's haul on Creative Crew. I was looking at all your things. That's exciting. I liked the little bobbin case that you got. I think I need one of those. Because I have bobbins all over the dang place. <laughs> I even think that because all of my bobbins are clear. The bobbins for my Singer Patchwork machine are clear. And the bobbins for my Juki are clear. And they're slightly different. They don't look different if you just look at them. But they are slightly different. And when I bought my Juki, I did not realize that. And I mixed up the bobbins. So every once in a while, I use the wrong bobbin and things go a little haywire. Just quickly folding over this binding. I like to sometimes just do the binding first on these small projects anyway because I find that my smaller projects like this just stay nice and square uh, when I do the binding first versus doing some quilting and then doing a self binding. I think it just stays really nice and square if I do this part first. <laughs> Y'all can hear Poppy. My um, snowball microphone has a filter that filters him out. But since that microphone wants to not work this evening, y'all are going to hear Poppy because he's really mad. Which I don't understand because I'm pretty sure that Harlan is in the same room with him playing Wii Golf. So you would think that popcorn would be okay because he's not by himself. It's not like he's in a room by himself and he's calling for us. Yep, that's Poppy downstairs. All right, I'm flipping over the third side now, y'all. It's going to be just a minute. I just did put those letters in the right place. I almost cut them off with the binding. Gloria said, what kind of iron is that? It's so cute. It is a steam fast. I'm going to tell you, this sucker gets hot. I like it. And for the price point, it was perfect. I got it on Amazon. And I know we're all different, y'all. <laughs> I know if I were to ask the chat, do you put water in your iron? Half of us would say yes and half of us would say no. 
I don't think there's a right answer or a wrong answer. I personally am one that does put water in my iron. This little cordless iron puts off a lot of steam to be a cordless iron. I am impressed. I would say the downside of this iron is that the handle is kind of shallow. And so my hands have a tendency to move that knob, here are the clicks, when I'm just moving the <laughs> iron around, I sometimes will slide that adjustment for the settings. And one day we were live and we were doing, I think it was the first block for all the things. And my hand had slid it to the very hottest setting and I scorched that block and it shriveled up some. So that's like the downside. That's like the only downside to this iron is my hands hit that little setting. So I just have become mindful to be careful not to let my hands slide that wheel. That's all. All right, we're flipping over this last side. Super cute with the words on there. I like that. How cute would this be if you had some like red check heat transfer vinyl and you cut your words out of that? Wouldn't that be cute? That would be adorable. All right, so we're just gonna really glue, or make sure all of this glue is dry. We're not bringing over any wet glue to the sewing machine. Ella, I remember you have uh, the African gray those uh, birds are a lot more vocal than umbrella cockatoos, although he, he says a few words, right? But mostly it's just noises. <laughs> and he's so weird because he laughs at the most appropriate times, like he completely understands what we're saying. And that's weird. But it's funny, too. Wanda, I used my scan and cut and drew the words onto my fabric. You'll have to come back on the replay because I talked about it in pretty good detail. But isn't that cool? Yes. We're going to let this cool off for just a second. And now when we go to the sewing machine, we're just sewing, y'all, because all of our applique is placed. Our binding is folded over. And we're just going to be sewing. So let me think. <laughs> it's been such a busy week. I've only thought just a tiny little bit about how I was going to sew down this applique. I think, I think we'll do a zigzag on some of it. And then, y'all, I think I'm going to switch over and do a free motion, free motion stitch on the flower, the leaves, the star, probably this section of the water can, uh, and the little center of the flower. That's my plan. I have a black thread in both the top and the bobbin, okay? And that is just a regular, uh, just a regular... Sewing thread. I think that's a YLI polyester thread. Yeah, this went pretty quick, right? And I think it's nice and cooled off. So let's switch on over to the sewing machine. So just while I'm over there, y'all, 
I won't be able to read your comments. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Thank you all so much to my moderators who keep an eye on the chat. Uh, I think during the evening, more shenanigans happen to people's lives. <laughs> so thank you all so much. I don't have to worry about that. And we're going to just jump right over here. I'm going to have to move my stool because I'm kind of far away. And you see I have, hopefully you can hear me. I don't know which microphone I'm using now. Uh, <laughs> you see I have a couple of different presser feet. Can y'all hear me good before I get started? Yes, Terry, I'm going to sew the binding down first. Okay, you can hear me. Yes, okay, good. I'm not sure which one of these webcams is picking up. I don't know which microphone I'm using. All right, so let's sew down this binding first before we start doing anything, okay? And here lately, y'all, I've been liking using my zipper foot to sew down my bindings, not just on small projects, but on uh, my big quilts too. So I'm gonna put on my little zipper foot. And I got a straight stitch. I'm gonna move that needle over just a little bit. And we're gonna do a straight stitch and I'm gonna do it right close to the edge of this binding. And we're just going to zip right around real quick and get that binding done. Now I am using a black thread and this is a dark navy blue so y'all probably will not see this stitch. some reason the zipper foot just helps me get right close to that edge. I just like to overlap where I started. Don't too much like to do a back stitch there because the thread just tends to build up. I'm going to trim these threads and then I'm going to try to show you and we'll see if it shows up with this lighting. Just barely. Look how close I was able to get. That's my stitch right there. Right next to the edge of that binding. All right, so now I'm gonna put on the open toe foot. We're gonna do a little zigzag stitch. We'll do a zigzag stitch on the handle and the body part. Uh, and the spout, all right? And I usually like to start with the pieces that are on the very lowest part of the applique when it's layered. So let's start with um, let's start with the spout and I just want to adjust this zigzag stitch and I'll tell you what settings I'm using. Uh. 
All right, right here at the end. That's the zigzag stitch I'm going to use. Uh, for my machine, it is set at 2.2 for the width and 0.7 for the length. And that's going to give me that little zigzag stitch right there. I think that'll be good for this handle, which is kind of thin. And we're sewing both sides of that handle. So it kind of needs to be a smaller zigzag. I've been using black thread on most of my all the things blocks. And I've really fallen in love with it because it just gives you a perfect outline. We're going to stop right there, right where the handle comes underneath of the body of that watering can, because I am very paranoid with the happenings tonight. Are we still good? Biggie says, I still have Lisa. Tari says, I lost Lisa. I don't, I don't. We're good. Okay, I'm going to keep on sewing. Okay. I'm a little paranoid now. All right. We're going to come back up the other side of the handle. How quick that zigzag stitch goes along. We're going to stop right there when we get to the leaf. And we're going to pull that away. And the spout of the watering can tucks right up underneath of the body of the watering can too. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this longer line and this little short line right there. Same settings. 2.2 on the width and 0.7 for the length. I am just going to jump right on over and not even cut the thread. And we're going to get this little tiny edge of fabric on the other side of that spout. And now we're going to jump right here, y'all, and we're going to catch the very top of the watering can and come down the right side. We'll cut all these jump stitches here in just a little bit.
that's going to go right over the edge of these stitches and really lock those in place and that'll be a nice finished stitch right there. And we're going to jump over here and the other side of the spout comes right up over and does go over. It's blending in right there, but there is a raw edge that goes all the way up to this flower. All right, and I think that's all the zigzag stitches that I want to do on this mug rug. Again, the lighting doesn't show it exactly the way I see it here in person, but that black thread really does a really pretty outline and sort of defines the pieces a little bit, uh, especially where they overlap one another because I've used the same fabric for the watering can. So it really adds a lot of detail using the black for an outline stitch. So, I'm gonna to attempt to do some free motion quilting on the rest of the pieces. The way my luck is gone with technical things, let's just pray that it all goes well. All right, let me switch this foot over. I really wish my other microphone was working well because I, when that microphone works good, it does sound pretty good, right? I don't know which one of these umpteen million webcam microphones is actually the one that's picking up my sound. All right, there's my free motion foot. If this is your first time seeing a foot like this, your sewing machine might have a foot like this. Your manual might call it a darning foot. Or a quilting foot. You might also have the options to lower your feed dogs. Um, I think I'm just gonna keep my feed dogs up tonight, y'all. <laughs> and, uh, and just pick a straight stitch and lower that straight stitch all the way to zero. And uh, so my plan is to free motion the star applique down and then this part of the spout, the leaves and the flower. We're going to move right along with that. And hopefully everything cooperates. We're going to bring up that bobbin thread. And lower that needle right back down right where we came out. And we're stitching, y'all. We're stitching. All right, couple little tiny stitches. That's all you need to do to lock that in place. And now we can cut those threads. Oh, that's going to be super cute. All right, 
second. When we get back to where we started, look how fast that went. <laughs> when we get to back to where we started, I'm just, again, a couple little tiny stitches, and then we're jumping. Needle up, and we can jump. And I'm going to jump right over here. Right there. That's cute. And now we're going to be jumping right over to this flower. I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why. <laughs> Not only do I think it's super cute, just a single little line just inside the edge of the applique. I think that's super cute. It almost looks like you drew it, right? But look how fast it's going. <laughs> Just like that, we stitched down the flower. We're going to jump over to the leaf. And we're going to catch this leaf right over here. Am I the only one who thinks that was super fast? <laughs> Lisa wants to know, what does the back of yours look like after doing the quilt thing? We're going to trim these. Uh, we're going to trim these little jump stitches and we'll take a look at the back over here. Oh, hopefully y'all can hear me. All right, so I have a couple of little jump stitches. I'm going to trim those, and then I'll hold it up close, okay? And you'll see the front up close. And then we'll flip it over to the back. My green leaf fabric is fraying just a tiny bit. There we go. All right, so here's the front. There we go. Isn't that super cute? That black thread's a little hard to see in this light. Super cute. And I don't know that you, oh yeah, you'll see it. But hold on, I want it to be a surprise. Let me, let me trim these off to the side. Cause I have a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of jump stitches. And it always looks a mess at first. But let me trim them for you. And we'll take a look at the quilting on the back. There's only 500 little jump stitches on the back. I hope you do give this little mug rug a try, though. 
I'm going to tell you what I did tonight, sewing down my applique or the way that I did my words. These are only suggestions, y'all. I hope you get creative with your stitches. We've said this recently. Uh, you know, most of our machines have <laughs> umpteen million different decorative stitches. Get creative with them. I tend to pick the same ones over and over, especially during the live, because these are quick. <laughs> no one wants to be here for four hours watching me sew this, right? So here's the quilting on the back, Lisa. Isn't that cute? That is the quilting on the back. Marion said, Lisa, do you like using a closed toe free quilting foot or an open toe? I really like the open toe foot, but let me just tell you, I have an open toe foot for this Juki. I ordered it from the Juki. And uh, I cannot get the tension right when I use the open toe foot. I don't understand why. The, the foot you saw me use tonight, it's a closed uh, free motion quilting foot. It's harder for me to see, but I don't have any tension issues. My open toe quilting foot, even though I can see better, I'm going to tell you I have the hardest time getting the tension right with that foot. And I've tried hours trying to get it right. So I just used the closed one, but that's the quilting on the back. Now, of course, you could do all kinds of background filling with or quilting in the background for the rest of the mug rug, right? But I think I'm going to call this one done. Lisa said, are the threads pulled into the fabric on the back for the free motion? part pulled into the fabric. I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean. I think you're wondering like the threads that I cut away. When I start my free motion quilting, I do little tiny little stitches back and forth and that really locks the quilting in. So I'm able to cut away the jump stitches and not worry about my free motion quilting coming undone. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Or not. Yeah, Vicki says, I use an open toe foot so I can see better. I agree. You can see so much better with an open toe foot. I don't even have mine over here anymore because I just got super frustrated with using it. But I do agree you can see so much better with it. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Terry. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Despite our technical difficulties, yeah, I think it turned out really good, right? Well, my machine performed much better tonight than it did the other day. One day it was giving me a, quite a bit of a fit. <laughs> tonight it's other technical difficulties. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to say your name correctly. Dio Linda? I'm sorry, y'all. I mess up names all the time. I just got an open toe foot for my brother to use. I hope you like it. I bet you can see much better. Oh, Lisa said, does the stitching on the back look regular? I have an issue with the top thread pulling into the back too far. Tension doesn't do anything. That's curious. Lisa, I'd love to do a Zoom with you while you're at your sewing machine. Because that does sound like a tension thing. Uh, that does sound like tension. And we could work on adjusting your sewing machine. If the thread is pulling into the back too far, it sounds like your top thread is too loose. And you need to tighten your upper thread. That's what it sounds like to me. Connie, I did the writing today. I did the writing on this mug rug 
with my scan and cut. I sure did. I imported the SVG file for this mug rug and I put in, let me just show y'all. <laughs> I bought this from Joanne Fabrics a couple months ago. I totally got duped, okay? <laughs> uh, it was an impulse buy at Joanne Fabrics. Look at all the colors of the gel pins, right? And some gel, okay, so here's the backstory. It's going to be long, but I'm going to try to speed it up. Some gel pins, like the friction pin, I believe that's a gel pin. Friction fine liner. I think this is a gel pin. It erases with heat, right? So I was like, I was at Joanne Fabrics, and uh, who knows what I was buying, but I do always walk through all the aisles. And I saw this pack of 48 gel pins, and I was like, whoa, I bet I could use these as heat erasing pins. And I have all these colors. And it was sitting on a shelf, and the price underneath of it, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought this was on sale for like $10. I was like, that's a good deal, $10. Look at all those gel pins, heat erase markers. Yes. So I bought it. But when I checked out, my total came to like $30 more than what I thought it was going to be. And I was like, what is going on here? This was like um, 30 some dollars. <laughs> and my coupon went towards a fabric, some yardage that I bought. So I don't know what I was thinking, but instead of putting it back, I was committed to buying them because I'd already fallen in love with the color. So I was like, okay, I'll just buy it, right? And then I got home and I was testing it and these do not erase with heat. That's why when I pressed this mug rug, none of that went away. So I was like, okay, well, I can't use them as heat erasing pens. So now I just use them in my planner and I have all these different color pins, right? Well, I put one in my scan and cut. Long story short, I put one in my scan and cut and drew the outline for my words. And then I took one and I colored in my words. That's how I got the words on my mug rug. Delia said, I bought a Juki and it has so many feet. I do not know how to use most of them. Me too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, uh, I use, just like the stitches on the machine, I use the same feet over and over again. Of course, the standard foot, I use that a lot. But here lately, I use the open toe foot for almost everything. This clear little foot, um, I think that's for like doing applique and stuff, but I like the open toe foot better. Uh, my zipper foot, I've fallen in love with. I used to never use a zipper foot, but now I call this my binding foot. <laughs> I very rarely put zippers in anything. The overlocking um, foot, I use every once in a while for art quilt projects that I don't want to put a binding on. I'll use my overlocking foot and just do an overlocking stitch around the edge. Fast cheater way to finish off the edge of like an art quilt. But these are the main feet I use and the rest of them are all in the box over there. <laughs> and there's quite a few of them over in the box. Yeah, Derry said, I'm just, she's going to just use heat transfer vinyl when she makes them. I just thought of that when I was coloring in my words. I was like, I could, I have all these colors of heat transfer vinyl that would have worked perfectly. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, try using some of your different feet. I'm going to tell you, um, 
I didn't invent using the zipper foot for doing bindings. I forget who I saw. It was actually somebody who I don't usually watch and it just came up on my suggested YouTube. You know, you scroll through, you open up YouTube and you see lots of videos from the people you always watch and then every once in a while there's one suggested for you. And um, and I just was happened to watch it and she was using her zipper foot to do the binding. I was like, I'm going to try that. And ever since, that's it. It's been a binding foot for me. <laughs> Candy, try the HTV. Try it. Uh, Glorious asked, what is your model of Juki? Mine is the HZL F600. Laura said, today was my first life. Yay, I'm so glad you're here, Laura. I hope you give this a try. Um, the pattern's down in the description box. Um, here's what's really cool about the mug rugs, right? Uh, and I think it was Wanda who had asked for a patriotic mug rug. You know, we're doing a mug rug each month. Um, a patriotic mug rug for July. Well, July the 4th, Independence Day is coming on. <laughs> and we're just now tonight doing the mug rug of the month for July. But the cool thing is, you know, I used the star fabric. That looks patriotic. Just by changing the fabric, you can give it a theme, right? Imagine all the different color fabrics you can do with your watering can and flowers. I'm kind of excited. I hope that some of you make this mug rug and you share your pictures over on Creative Crew. But most definitely, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Y'all could be doing a million other things. So thank you for um, spending some time with me and everybody here. If you're on the replay, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Y'all don't forget tomorrow. Uh, look behind me. You can just see it up on the wall. Aren't the nighttime lives totally different? Like the lighting is totally different. Can you see the sewing machine? Little mini quilt up on the wall. I did hand stitch those letters. It is so dang cute. I can't wait to show you tomorrow. Wanda, you have a question. Can I cut fabric on my Cricut? Yes, ma'am. You should be able to cut fabric on your Cricut. Now, here's the thing, and I'll just say a disclaimer. I have a scan and cut. I don't have a Cricut. But I know several people who cut fabric appliques out with their Cricut. Now, I think Cricut has umpteen million different designs or model numbers. But I'm pretty sure all of them cut fabric. What I would do, Wanda, is because there's so many different models, in YouTube, in the search bar, type in your specific model and then cutting fabric and watch the videos that pop up. That's what I would do. Only the Explore Air and Up for Cricut. Yeah, see, I don't know all the things about the, the Cricut. I know um, just not the Cricut Air 2 though, unless it's on the heat and bond before you cut it. See, I don't know all the rules for the Cricut cutting fabric stuff. I would pull up some videos for your specific Cricut machine and then watch some tutorials on that. Terry said, what is the best backing for applique? 
When you say backing, Terry, do you mean like adhesive? Like fusible to hold down your applique to other pieces? I'm assuming that's what you mean. That is um, one of those questions, depending on the whoever you ask, you might get a different answer. I know lots of people love the steam -a seam I have some steam -a seam but I'm a heat and bond girl. <laughs> uh, there's also Wonder Under. There's lots of different products for doing applique. Uh, I just prefer heat and bond light. And then if I'm sewing with the sewing machine, heat and bond light. And then if I'm going to be hand stitching the applique, I like heat and bond feather light. Hey, you just got a Cricut Maker last week. That's exciting. I hope you use your machines, y'all. Uh, I'm kind of stoked because in the quilt retreat, Brenda's going to pull out her brand new scan and cut. And uh, she, she said... She's a little intimidated by it. We're going to have her pull it out during the quilt retreat. And we're going to play with her new machine. <laughs> and um, I just moved mine from across the room because I wasn't using it har hardly any. And I'm going to tell you what. It, it saves a lot of time cutting applique. And there's so many different other uses for it too. So... Laura said, is there a place we can post our pictures of tonight's mug rug? Are you on Facebook, Laura? If so, uh, in the description box, there's a link to the creative crew. Come join us over there. We have like 6,000 members. A lot of us are here tonight. Uh, and you can share pictures. You'll see other people's pictures of the mug rug from tonight. And um, the link for creative crew on Facebook is in the description box. So yeah, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Uh, again, just reminder, block nine. Is it block nine? Yes, block nine tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, it's the sewing machine block. The five inch block is free, y'all. I hope if you're not making this quilt right now, I hope you're at least printing out the patterns and saving them for some other time. Okay, y'all, I think that's it for tonight. I have no idea what the sound sounds like this evening. I apologize for that. Uh, and that's thrown me off my game a little bit. Hopefully I can figure it out before tomorrow. <laughs> I can't promise you anything, though. Usually something is going to go a little haywire. But thank y'all so much for hanging out with me anyways. All right, post your pictures. Oh, hold on. Let me answer Marion's question real quick. You said you hand colored in that ink color on your quilt block. Did you have to heat set it? Okay, here's the thing about the uh, the gel pens. If you're going to run out to Joann's and get them, because <laughs> they really do a nice job on fabric and they don't bleed. I do not know if this is permanent or not. So don't go doing a whole bunch of quilt blocks like this on a quilt that's going to get washed unless you do some testing. So Marion, I'm glad you asked that before we hung up. All right. Uh, I have not tested these pins to see if they will wash out in the wash. Um, I'm just going to hang this mug rug up on the wall. But ordinarily, I use my mug rugs, which means I wash them because I use them as snack mats, right? Um, but I did not test these pins before I used them. So on projects like this that are just getting hung up, they work great. But don't go coloring a bunch of quilt blocks without testing them if you plan on washing your quilt. Do some testing first. <laughs> uh, 
but I didn't heat set them. Okay, so when I glue basted my layers, I ironed over them and that heat set them. But uh, I don't know if they'll wash out or not. I don't know that yet. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic evening. Poppy must have gone to sleep. He's quieted down, and I'm off to join him. I will see y'all tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow. I can't believe tomorrow's Friday already. These weeks are going by, like, so super fast. Super fast. And before I go, just a quick thing about the scrolling stitch frames. Many of y'all have scrolling stitch frames in the mail this week. They're on their way to you. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from four people that I've sent messages to. And uh, if I don't hear back from them, I'm going to be listing some scrolling stitch frames in my Etsy shop. Okay? All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.